What's up guys? Hope you all are well. Welcome back. So as you know, the transfer window just ended and it was an absolute like frenzy towards the end. Like where are we going to sign Lamar? Where are we going to sign Oxlade Chamberlain? You know, Naby Keita deal came out of literally nowhere. You know, would we get the Virgil van Dijk deal done as well? And uh, yeah, it was just complete frenzy. Like the last, let's say, week of the chance window was probably the finest time I've ever had during a Liverpool transfer season. You know, for once I was excited, you know, were Liverpool going to sign these big names? You know, for once Liverpool was showing this major ambition and it was actually great to see also players, you know, choosing Liverpool over our biggest rivals. You know, Oxlade choosing us over, over Chelsea and over Arsenal. Van Dijk obviously earlier in the window over Man City and Chelsea as well. Naby Keita signing early for next season. You know, his desire to play for Liverpool, you know, was shown by that. Also, Thomas Lamar chose Liverpool over Arsenal. You know, this is such an exciting time to be a Red. And under Jurgen Klopp's army, we are going to reach the top. We are going to reach the heights, you know, that we all expect and want and have longed for for many, many years. And I believe personally, Jurgen Klopp will guide us to glory, you know, during his tenure. But for this video, I wanted to give you a transfer analysis of all our ins, all our outs. And uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy the video. Remember to smash a huge thumbs up if you do. Subscribe down below if you haven't subscribed already. Turn on any post notifications because I'm back. Um, so let's get straight into it. So let's start off with our transfers and the first name through the door was Dom Solanke. And with Dom signing, it was very underwhelming. Not many fans were impressed, especially after we, we were promised this huge transfer budget of 200 million pounds. And then our first signing, our first major signing was Dom Solanke. You know, it was very underwhelming but it was a very, very, very shrewd signing. At the time, Klopp was saying he'd be a bit pop player, you know, one for the future, not one to impact our season now. One, you know, we, we can grow, develop, and turn into a, you know, a star. But for this season, he'd play a bit pop role, play cup games, come for the bench now and again, but, you know, find himself mostly with the under 23s. And as we have seen from preseason and now in the beginning of the season, he has found himself into Liverpool's first team. I think this season, Dom will play, you know, the cup games as well. But I feel like he'll come on in a lot of Premier League games. He offers something very different to what we have. Someone in the Origi mold, you know, like a bigger, taller striker, quite physical. But I feel like his hold at play is a lot better than that of Divock. And as we have seen, that means Divock has gone out on loan and uh, Dom becomes our third choice striker. Uh, we also have Danny Ings, but I feel like Dom will probably be third choice after obviously Stadji and Firmino. But I do feel like he'll play a very, very big part this season. I think it's a fantastic signing, a great, great signing. And one of those who underwhelming at first, but plays, you know, a very, very big part in Liverpool's future. And I really think it is a cracking signing. And well done to our scouts, as your own club did say, they found him and credit to it's due. You know, they did very, very well finding Dom. Expect big things from him in the future. But for now, I feel like, you know, let's be patient, wait for him to bet in and then start making, you know, judgments towards, you know, next season or the season after. But for now, I think it's about finding his feet in Liverpool Red and, you know, banging in them goals. So the next name through the door was indeed Mohamed Salah and what a signing he has turned out to be for Liverpool. At the time, there were a lot of, you know, critics about Klopp saying, you know, why would you buy a Chelsea reject? He went to Chelsea, failed miserably at Chelsea, went off uh, to Roma and Fiorentina, did very, very well in the Italian league. But can he do it in England on a cold, rainy day in Stoke, you know? So uh, that was the big question marks about his signing. And when he signed, uh, I was happy. But at 37 million pounds, I'm like, Klopp, you have to get this one right. It's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, he has to be a first teamer and get it right, you know, from the beginning. And uh, he's done nothing but that. He has been superb, a great, great addition to the squad. And he adds something very different as well. You know, when Mane plays, we're very one-dimensional just with him. Now we have the exact same threats on the opposite flank. And it is something to behold. Liverpool are so good going forward. And we're going to be a joy to watch, even for the neutrals. This is one of these signings which actually gets fans off their feet. He's scoring goals, you know, and he's not just doing that. He's putting in the hard yards, you know, defending as well, putting his body on the line for the badge. And it's a great, great signing. There were question marks, obviously, over his defensive work. Obviously, at Roma, he didn't have to defend. Under Jurgen Klopp, he's done a lot of defensive work and done extremely well. And I think he is one of the, you know, Klopp-style signings, 
great signing for 37 million pounds. In today's market, that is a steal. What a sign in Mo Salah and expect big, big things from him this season. You know, he's played Champions League football. He has experience there. You know, he's looking very, very good. And uh, it's hard not to get excited about his sign. He is one of those players who I expect big, big things from this season. Scored goals already, you know, assisting already. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit this season. Hopefully he can better his total from last season at Roma. And if that happens, I think he'll be a very big player that contributes to Liverpool's success if we do, you know, achieve that. So, once again, great signing Mo Salah. Well done, Jurgi Klopp. For Liverpool's next signing, there was a lot of talk about Liverpool and their left-back problems. A lot, of, a lot of our problems defensively have come from left-back. James Milner had to fill in there last season. But as we have seen so far this season, Jurgi Klopp believes that a natural left back is a much better option and we have another, you know, midfield option, like a new signing, according to Jurgi Klopp. So, uh, in the market, there weren't that many players. We're after Ryan Sessegnon from Fulham and then obviously Sead Kolasinic, however you want to say his name, went to Arsenal. So, local fans were a bit skeptical, you know, who are we actually going to sign? So, when the name Andy Robertson came about, every fan was a bit skeptical, coming from Hull City, you know, how good can he be? Uh, Hull's defensive problems, you know, weren't down to Robinson, but they weren't the best defensively. And obviously, he had to play some form of part in that. There was a lot of talk about his one-on-ones not being the best, being, you know, quite defensively inadequate in those positions. And uh, Jürgen Klopp obviously has said the exact same thing. So far, he's looked good. He's looked okay. Looked quite good going forward. Defensively, hasn't really been tested. I would say if he does get tested, it would be... Something I'd be a bit worried about. You know, coming from Hull, straight into Liverpool, it's a big difference. You know, the quality is a lot different. And uh, he's expected to put his, you know, body on the line, his heart on the line. But it's not just that. It's your quality as well. And does he have that? He hasn't been tested yet. We will maybe see against Man City. They have a lot of good wingers. And I think he'll be heavily tested if he does start. Um... But overall, I think it's a good signing. It's, it's one of those signings where, again, underwhelming can be, you know, very, very good. Very, you know, under the, under the carpet kind of signings. I think let's give him a bit of time to, you know, settle in at Liverpool. It's a big club. Hasn't played for a big club his whole life. So it will take a bit of time to get used to the atmosphere, the whole environment by Liverpool. You know, winning is everything kind of, kind of mindset. And it will take time. But what we have seen so far, it's very promising. And he looks like, again... A very good signing by Jurgen Klopp. So far, Klopp has not got one signing wrong in his tenure. Somewhere along the line, he's going to make a mistake. But so far, all the signings he has made have been really, really good, really shrewd, and have made some sort of impact on Liverpool. So, the next man in Liverpool literally came from nowhere, I would say. At the time uh, of his signing, there was no talk about Liverpool trying to get this kind of deal over the line. At the beginning of the season, Liverpool were pushing for his signature really, really hard, trying to convince Red Bull Leipzig to, to buckle and actually sell Naby Keita to Liverpool. And unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't to be. I thought at the time, as did every other fan, Liverpool had, had reserved that, that interest for now and uh, we'll take it up again next season when we can try sign him for, for his buyout clause. Um, and that's what I thought it was. Obviously, Naby Keita wanted to play for Liverpool, had his heart set on Liverpool. But if a deal's not possible, a deal's not possible. You know, so that's what I thought. I thought, dead and buried for now. We'll pick it up again next season. But out of the woodwork, literally out of nowhere, Yogi Klopp comes with a comes with a with an RKO and uh, and pulls a Naby Keita deal out of the bag. For me, this could be one of our shrewdest signings in a very, very long time. Liverpool have signed him for £48 million with a lot of um, premium payments. And for Liverpool, that is honestly one of the best deals we, we have made, like I said, in a very, very long time. We always look at the Bayern Munichs of the world and say, wow, they're so good at securing talent for next season. For um, example, Nicolas Sule and uh, Sebastian Rudy from uh, Hoffenheim. And everyone was looking at them like, wow, it's so good. They signed Lewandowski, you know, prior. They signed uh, Mario Götze as well. So that's the kind of business that these big European sides do. And everybody's, you know, in high praise. Finally, Liverpool do something probably better than that business. And my God, I am happy. Obviously, it sucks he cannot be out this season, and he would be a very, very big part of the squad. But for Liverpool to, to secure a talent like that for next season, oh my God.
Okay, Liverpool's midfield is going to be incredible. You know, topped with other signings that will eventually come in, you know, next season as well. It's going to be an exciting, exciting time to have Naby Keita in the midfield. For now, we have to watch afar. But what a signing. That could be our best business, this transfer window, hands down. Great, great sign, Naby Keita. But uh, have to see you next season, unfortunately. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. For Liverpool's last signing of the summer, we have Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. It's one of those where we were linked with him the whole trance window, and things had kind of gone quiet. Nobody was really talking about his signing. No one was really saying much about it. And then out of the blue, you know, Liverpool snap him out of Chelsea's, Chelsea's grip, and I think it's a very good signing. I must be honest, a great signing. And it's one of those signings where it kind of stamps Liverpool's authority as we up and coming, we are back to the big time and Liverpool are forced to be reckoned with. We beat Arsenal for his signature. We beat Chelsea for his signature. He only wants Liverpool. And for Liverpool, that is a huge boost. You know, it's, it's an ego booster that Liverpool are finally back and competing amongst, you know, Europeans' best clubs for these good players. And even though he won't be a starter, you know, all the time, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic signing. At 40 million pounds, a little bit on the steep side, but as we have seen with Adam Lallana, you know, the output at your former club has no bearing on the output you have under Yogi Klopp. Yogi Klopp obviously sees Ox as a very, very good, good player for our squad, for important games, has Champions League experience as well, works hard for the badge, runs his socks off. You know, what more could you want from a player? Also, by the way, guys, a nickname, Ox, just burn that one, I hate it. Just call him like, Chamber or I don't know something else. Ox literally is terrible. I hate it. Um, but yeah, great, great signing once again, Yogi Klopp. I think overall we've done terrific business. All five of our signings, I think, will have an impact. Obviously, Nabi for next season, but they all have an immediate impact, you know, on our side. Sure, they're not, you know, starting eleven players, some of them, but. Liverpool need a good quality squad to compete in the Champions League, you know, to compete for FA Cup, Carling Cup, etc. There's a lot of games to play. Top four fight, Liverpool need rotation, and these players are, are of, of like similar quality standard to what we have. So if you, let's say, take Genie out, you'll have a much better replacement now than we had last season. So it's really looking good. Liverpool's chance of business, once again, I think has been superb. There is obviously the missing, the missing piece in the jigsaw which, you know, is uh, Virgil van Dijk. It's one of those situations where, yeah, sometimes a deal is just not possible. Liverpool threw everything at it in the beginning, and whoever the person was who leaked Liverpool's interest and that van Dijk had indeed chosen Liverpool, you're an absolute knobhead, and you do deserve to get sacked because that is a criminal offense. Like, you can't, you know, jeopardize Liverpool's transfer dealings by doing that, by leaking the stuff to the press. And I really hope that guy actually gets fouled or girl and, and does get fired. He does deserve to lose his job, him or her. It's, it's really bad PR work by the club. And it's one of those which is very frustrating. But for people who are saying that the expectations have changed because we haven't signed him, you know, you can't really say that because we never had signed him. You know, he wasn't ever our player. So the expectations that you had at the beginning of the season can only be enhanced. We have Oxlade now, we have Naby Keita for next season. You know, things are looking up. There should be a lot more positivity around the club than there is. But I feel like in the coming weeks, coming months, you will see the quality of this Liverpool squad, the quality of the signings. Liverpool are back fighting amongst Europeans elite. We are finally back, boys. We are finally back. So that's it for this video. For the outgoings and my opinions on that, the transfer analysis will be in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Please let me know down below what you think of the signings. Rate them out of, out of 10, obviously. One being the lowest, 10 being the highest. I'm quite interested, uh, always do this. I'm quite interested to see, you know, what you guys are thinking, how you guys are feeling about the transfer market. Have your opinions as well, you know, changed by Liverpool for the season because you haven't signed Van Dijk. Let me know down below in the comments. But once again, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. We're going to smash a huge thumbs up if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't subscribed already. <laughs> and uh, turn on post notifications. And I will see you guys next time for another video. Until then, I will see you there. Bye.